After being given the yaks with the season already underway, Nikita Mazepin has continued to express his displeasure with Haas's decision to drop him amidst the appalling situation in Eastern Europe. Following his F1 dismissal, the Russian admitted he was disappointed in the way the matter was handled by team principal Gunter Steiner, as he revealed he only became aware of the situation at the 11th hour and received zero prior warning. I learned about the firing of me the same time as it had been released to the press, Mazepin said shortly after his ousting. It's been almost five weeks since Haas took the decision to axe the Russian driver, enough time to get some previously unknown information to creep onto the surface, which is exactly what we'll be covering in today's video. As it happened, many believed it was simply the Russian military conflict that was the cause of Mazepin's dismissal. But as things settled down, it became more than obvious that the Russian sacking was rather related to the loss of his financial backing, as the team was forced to drop its title sponsor, Ural Kali, a company owned and controlled by Dmitry Mazepin, Nikita's father. Both Ural Kali and Nikita were quick not to rule out any legal action. Ural Kali intends to protect its interests in line with applicable legal procedures, the company stated and reserves its rights to initiate judicial proceedings, claim damages, and seek repayment of the significant amounts Eurocali had paid for the 2022 Formula One season. But it was only a couple of short days after the Russian driver was given the axe by Haas that his and his father's name appeared on the EU sanctions list, something Mazepin just recently described as cancel culture against his country. I don't agree with being in the sanctions, and I've said previously I intend to fight it," the Russian admitted in his latest interview. Perhaps now is not the right time, because if you look at the whole situation that's happening against athletes in the general sense, it's cancel culture against my country. I see tremendous risks in saying anything at all about this case because I will never satisfy everyone, and therefore I will keep myself publicly quiet," he concluded. The EU sanctions list describes Father Dmitry Mazepin as a member of the closest circle of Vladimir Putin, with Nikita Mazepin being defined as a person associated with a leading business person, his father, involved in economic sectors providing a substantial source of revenue to the government of the Russian Federation. But despite the restraints being fired Mazepin's way, these sanctions were not in place at the time he got dismissed with the FIA even going the extra mile in order to allow the Russian to compete this season, as they allowed him to race under a neutral FIA flag. But the team dropped Mazepin nevertheless, something the former Haas driver has revealed his disappointment in. I deserved more support from the team, he said. There is no legal reason to terminate the contract. I was relieved to see the FIA allowed us to start in neutral colors. I was hoping to drive, Mazepin continued. I am very disappointed to hear that my F1 contract has been terminated," he wrote shortly after getting dropped. While I understand the difficulties, the ruling from FIA plus my ongoing willingness to accept the conditions proposed in order to continue were completely ignored, and no process was followed in this unilateral step," stated the undoubtedly hurt driver on his Instagram account. But the Haas team principal, Gunter Steiner, insisted the team had no other choice but to sack the driver. We couldn't make any other decision when we got to it. There was no possibility to keep him driving. The criticism, the sanction altogether, it didn't work out anymore, he recently told the media. But what came as the biggest shock to many was the way in which Steiner handled the matter, with the chief admitting the last time he spoke to Mazepin was whilst he was still wearing the Haas overalls, untroubled about his future with his sights set firmly on the 2022 season. I only did it in writing, I didn't talk to him," Steiner said when being asked about informing his driver of the decision. It was not his doing, but sometimes you end up in this situation and you need to deal with it," he said, before admitting he's always sorry when he needs to do something like that. But when asked whether he sees Mazepin as a victim or feels sympathy for him, he revealed it was difficult to say. The external circumstances, which neither I nor he can change, are just the way they are. You have to live with it and move on. I see it as part of life," the team boss concluded. And whilst the team looked troubled by the matter, their worries were quickly forgotten as they filled Mazepin's seat by bringing back their previous star driver, Kevin Magnussen, something Steiner has been delighted by. 
Magnussen started the season on a high, giving the team its highest position in over three years by clinching fifth at the season opening round in Bahrain, and then following it up with yet another strong points finish by holding off Hamilton to cross the line in ninth place in Jeddah. For sure, bringing Kevin back showed what was possible. I think it would have been very difficult if Nikita and Mick had been in the team, Steiner said, when being asked whether such strong performances would have been possible with the team's previous driver lineup. I'm not on the wave of expectation. That's for other people. And I think before the first race, they expected us to be last, he admitted, as the team principal also seems to be shocked by how well the team has performed in the first few rounds. But he didn't rule out the difficulty of dealing with potential contract infringements and legal issues caused by Mazepin's sacking. It's a very complex matter, even for legal experts, added Steiner, who admitted the team will certainly lose some money, but not enough to threaten their existence in the sport. But it was Mick Schumacher who truly opened up about the sudden change in teammates, as he did not hesitate to reveal his pleasure with having a proven and reliable driver behind the wheel of the sister car. I feel more comfortable with the working relationship with the other driver this year. It's going really well, he stated. We are realigning expectations. Last year, we had to be happy if we found ourselves in 16th place. This season, we can finish 5th if everything goes optimally, the Haas driver concluded. It's very interesting to see how Kevin approaches a Grand Prix weekend. We can benefit from each other in the way he feels from the car and what I feel. We share all the information. It's very open about how the car behaves in different corners," Schumacher concluded. But signing Nikita Mazepin for the 2021 season proved exceedingly beneficial, as the American team was able to allocate all the sponsorship he brought towards their 2022 race car. It's no secret that Haas completely rode off last year with the intention of getting a head start in 2022. And the team's gamble proved to be a step in the right direction as the Steiner-led organization has been punching far above its weight class early in the season already. That sudden success, paired with the loss of the team's main sponsor, started attracting a lot of eyeballs to the white car, which remains predominantly uncovered in company logos. Gunter Steiner admitted talks with potential sponsors to fill those blank parts are already underway, as the team hopes to recover from its early season financial loss. There's a lot of interest because of the result. Nobody expected what we did, but there's no madness. We didn't win a race, yet," Steiner said jokingly. And despite the team's struggles in Australia, with both cars out of the point scoring positions, it is beyond evident that Haas took an immense step up from last year, which will only translate to happy faces in the team's finance department as a big sponsorship deal seems to be just around the corner. But we want to know what you guys think. Do you think Nikita Mazepin got dropped in a harsh way? What would you do if you were Gunter Steiner? And where do you think Haas will finish in the standing? Let us know in the comments down below. We've let YouTube decide which video of ours you would enjoy watching next the most based on your own unique watching habits and preferences. Let's see if they are right.